Hello everybody, welcome to another one of these things. I hope you're all well. I'm certainly doing well here. Just Marco here on a fine Wednesday evening in Toronto. Actually, pretty mild Wednesday evening in Toronto. It was mild during the day too. Would have been awesome to be out shooting during the day for one of these episodes. Unfortunately, I had to stay in and do some paid work. Yes, I still have to do paid work. Make the dinero, the cheddar, the greenbacks, the frog skins, uh, you know, to pay the bills. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, this evening we're going to be talking about some software. Topaz uh, Photo AI version 2.3 specifically. What are some of the improvements that they've made? As well as the differences between it and Gigapixel 7. It seems to be a burning question on the minds of many of you. Uh, which one you should be buying? Um, should you have both? Does one negate the other? And so on. I sort of entered the family of Topaz products when I bought Topaz Video AI. When we came back from Iceland, I had all this um, high frame rate footage from my Sony a7C. Some of you may have know that that camera doesn't shoot uh, 4K in the higher frame rates, the original a7C. And um, so I wanted to match my other footage that was shot in 4K. So uh, naturally, you know, everyone's telling me that I have to pick up Topaz uh, Video uh, AI. And it's become sort of a standard for this kind of stuff. And, and, and for the photo stuff, Topaz Photo AI I've sort of become a standard for that stuff as well. And I know in production houses, they use Gigapixel all the time uh, as well for doing the um, for doing the upscaling stuff. So um, yeah, it can make your work look pretty slick. By the way, that's one of the biggest criticisms about my, my channel, that this looks too slick up here. You know, people don't trust uh, stuff that looks too slick. You know, they're worried that the man is behind the channel. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, I run a channel about how you can all make your stuff look more slick. So it would be natural that my stuff should look, you know, pretty decent. I'm not saying I've got the most fantastic looking channel, but I've worked really hard to make my channel look good. So please don't let that dissuade you from listening to what I've got to tell you, because if you want your stuff to look good, um, I'm just, uh, I'm learning along the way, just like many of you may be. So uh, I'm, I'm just a regular guy up here and Topaz, disclaimer, certainly is not paying me for anything. They're not sending me free software. They have no say in what I say in this video and I don't back anything or um, endorse anything that I don't believe in myself or use myself. So anyway, let's get to this. I'm reinventing myself. I'm me and nobody else. Ooh, I can't help but smile. So the first question is whether or not you even need Topaz Photo AI. Maybe you can just spend half as much on Topaz Gigapixel. Well, if you need denoising and sharpening, you're stuck with having to go with Topaz Photo AI. So let's open an image to start. Gonna hit browse images here. Gonna grab this capuchin monkey because everyone loves a capuchin monkey is what I always say. I shot this when we were in Costa Rica. Kind of a boring image because uh, not much going on in the background. What Topaz Photo AI does first is it runs its autopilot. It does that to determine what it thinks the image needs. And we can see from the sliders over here, it's uh, telling us that it only needs some noise removal. It's probably done too good a job actually. I don't really find that this is very realistic. Every image has got a little bit of noise going on and it's completely cleaned it out. Now, right in the software here, we can modify that. We can reduce the amount of noise removal. What I prefer to do is just leave this the way it is and then jump into Photoshop where I can kind of fine tune how much fake grain I add to it. <laughs> I do recommend that you try some of these other models out as well. Just because I prefer something doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to prefer it. So go through these and see what you like. You know, trial and error isn't going to hurt here. I'm just going to close this up right now. Uh, another recommendation I can make is to leave upscaling for the end because upscaling takes most of the processing power. And so if you're doing all of this stuff after the upscaling all of these are going to take a lot longer when you're waiting for your previews so just 
just uh, another tip for you there. And upscaling is one of the things that they've improved in this version. They've added two new models to the upscaling. And another thing that they've done as well is there's an error that was occurring. I'm going to turn on the sharpening here. I'm going to show you how subject detection actually works. These AI models are the same as they were in the previous version. Uh, they probably work a little bit more efficiently than they did before. I'm not really certain. So if I turn on edit subject, you can see that it knows where the monkey is. Now, that shouldn't be a big problem here because there's nothing in the background. So in the Windows version anyway, they fixed some issue where I think subtracting from this area became an issue. Uh, now when you turn on subtract, it gives you this little brush. You can change the size of the brush by using your uh, bracket keys on the keyboard. Uh, or you can go to this slider here. I just find it's a lot nicer to use the bracket keys. And then you can paint the way what you don't want it to sharpen. So I'm going to undo that because I want it to sharpen all of that stuff. Again, try these other models. I'm actually going to turn it on to strong. Having this image open previously, I kind of decided that I like strong. Lens blur comes in handy when you've got foreground objects that are, are blurry. It kind of does its best to determine um, what is supposed to be blurry in the foreground. It doesn't just sharpen everything. Now recover faces. There are two things that Topaz Photo AI does to determine whether or not it turns on recover faces. First thing it's going to do is determine whether that face is human or not. Although this capuchin is very human-like, Topaz Photo AI is smart enough to know it's not a human. That's one of the reasons it's not turning on recover faces. And another reason may be that if the face is uh, defined or sharp enough already and it doesn't need any recovery, if we force recover faces on and give it some time, you'll see that it'll do a very poor job in recovering this because it doesn't really know what it's doing since it's not a human. So there you go, it has no idea what it's doing. I'm gonna turn that off. So anyway, let's jump into our upscale to check out those new upscale models. The two new models are standard version two and high fidelity version two. I would stick to these four at the top and just avoid standard version one and high fidelity version one. They are the older models. That means the new models are improved. So why would you want to use the old ones, right? <laughs> low resolution is great if you're starting with something that really is low resolution. So if you've got like a drawing or a painting, any kind of graphics, I'd recommend that you give graphics a go as well or maybe you want a certain look. Anyway this is another one of those cases where you might want to do a little bit of trial and error. I'm going to stick to high fidelity with this one and then I'm just going to go to save image and I'm going to save out our capuchin. So for those of you who are unaware there are different view modes. Uh, you can change them from down here. I really like this one where you can just kind of slide this back and forth and see what changes are being made. But we've also got this, which gives you completely separate windows. And then we've got another one here that just gives you the result. I really dig this one. Anyway, yes, let's just open up another image. I'm going to close this. So let's grab something with an actual human face in it. Zooming out is going to be slow because autopilot's doing its thing. And you can see that autopilot's determined that all this needs is some sharpening. Like I said before, if a face in the image is good enough, it's going to determine it doesn't need to recover faces, so it won't activate recover faces. It does believe that it needs a little bit of sharpening. And um, if we get in closer here on her face, by the way, you're probably wondering how I captured this beautiful moment of this guy holding this empty box. And uh, this is a commercial photo shoot and I, uh, comes in really handy for this demo. Uh, you can see it's a bit over sharpened. Now this might be fine if you are not going to be looking at this this close. Uh, the sharpening might look nice if it's from back here, but once you get in on it, yeah, it's a little bit over sharpened, which you can alleviate by just going in and adjusting some of these. Now, the reason I think that Autopilot has chosen lens blur is because of this foliage in front of her. Lens blur it basically allows things in the foreground to uh, be, be blurry while it's sharpening things in behind it. So any kind of like lens effects like that 
it's taking those things into account. Uh, if you go to standard though, it's, I've tried this before on this image, it just looks <laughs> horrible. And something to be kind of cognizant of is that all this stuff on the right is happening in the order that you're seeing it here in the list. So when you click on remove noise, it's removing noise before it's sharpening. So if I turn remove noise on, you'll see that things are a lot better because it's not actually going in and amplifying the noise when you put the sharpening on. I actually act like the noise in this image. I think it's, it's pretty natural. Although if you're going to be using the standard AI model for sharpening, you're going to want to turn remove noise on, obviously. I'm going to turn lens blur back on because I think it's really the one best suited to this image. So what happens if you force recover faces on an image that doesn't really need it? I'm going to turn recover faces on here. And now look at this weirdness. I was really hoping that they were going to fix this in this version. This transition between the sharp area and where recover faces takes over is horrible. And I think the reason this is happening is um, partly because of what I had mentioned before. This all being processed in the order that you're seeing it here. Now, if sharpening happened after recover faces, I think that this would work a lot better. I'm no expert, but this is my feelings. Issues aside, if you take a little bit of time just to figure out how all of these things work, Topaz Photo AI can be a very, very valuable tool. Sometimes there's some images that I wouldn't even consider usable, and this Recover Faces can really save the day. Let me just open another one real quick for you, one that doesn't really have a definitive subject in it. So those of you who like to do uh, astro work, you'll know that you'll often get a lot of noise in images. So that's just the way things go when you're working in the middle of the night at high ISOs. So just look what Autopilot's done on its own. You can pretty much leave this the way it is. It's done a really nice job getting rid of the noise. So of course Lightroom and Adobe Raw really do a great job at this now as well. But if you're in here already, um, yeah, this is uh, just fantastic for the, for the Astro people. I took this in Iceland, by the way, and I actually haven't done anything with this yet. Just kind of lucky the way the car came through the shot. So having worked in software development before, I know that these products don't bring themselves to market magically. They take a lot of time, they take a lot of money, so I can't see Topaz showing us any charity once it comes time to release Topaz Photo AI 3. Um, it's just like Topaz Video AI 4 for those who own version 3. You know that going to 4 is a paid upgrade, makes total sense, they've got to pay their employees. It's actually, it looks like a huge leap forward as well because just from the examples I've seen online, what it can do, like frame interpolation, they're talking about 16 times slow motion, like that's insanity. I can imagine the processing time to like crank through like 4K video. So it's not necessarily a substitute for shooting high frame rates to begin with. So I'm sure most of you have seen the OpenAI demos of what Sora can do. Absolutely mind blowing. Now that's just with prompts. That's without any source material from an artist. I mean, it is from source material because that source material is like AI going out there and just taking it from everywhere. But I'm, I mean, it's not like someone like myself feeding a photograph into AI or some video into AI that I've created and then leveraging AI to make it better. And that is really where I see the incredible power of what tools from companies like Topaz are, are, are giving us. And so really the limits are just I mean, we're in the infancy of all this stuff. And of course, you know, there's the debate whether or not artists will be losing their jobs. Well, I'll tell you right now, there is no debate. Artists have been losing their jobs for a while now to AI. The last company I was at, I mean, I left that company in March. I was with them for a year. We were using Midjourney to do some stuff. We would have had to hire three more artists to do that work that we were doing in Midjourney. A lot of the stuff I was doing, I mean, I was just touching up things like hands that had like eight fingers on them, right? So, 
um, those were three jobs lost to AI. And not only were three jobs lost to AI, but our government here provides tax credits for companies using new or emerging technologies. So provided a company does reports on what new technologies they're using and submits those, they will get a tax credit. So essentially our government pays to have employers eliminate jobs. It sounds crazy and, <laughs> uh, and, and why would um, a government do that? It's a lack of forethought on the part of government, um, but on the other hand, we all have to pivot as artists. We have to all look at our, our value. And I heard someone make the comment, well, when human made becomes devalued, that's when we start losing our jobs. Well, the reality is that I think the general populace, we want to pay less for things. Um, so if it's a car, we rather a robot make that car than a human make that car. And that's why we had the industrial revolution. So, <laughs> I mean, that's um, automation. Um, and AI is essentially automation. AI even being called AI is a bit of a debate because the reality is it's not that intelligent because it's really just a regurgitation of what humans have made using uh, algorithms, etc. I hope you guys got something out of this one. If so, consider leaving me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay too. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of these in the future, please consider subscribing. If you've got any ideas for future shows, please leave those in the comments below. And until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. Peace.